The Nautical Almanac is a publication describing the positions of a selection of celestial bodies for the purpose of enabling navigators to use celestial navigation to determine the position of their ship while at sea. There is a new Nautical Almanac published for every year. The Nautical Almanac contains tabulations of the Sun, Moon, navigational planets and stars that can be used to determine gyro and compass error from gyro and compass bearing observations. The information is presented mainly by day and by hour, over two pages. One page will cover dates, for example, 2002, May, 10, 11, 12, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, for Aries, the navigational planets, and the stars. The opposite page covers the same dates for the sun and moon. When a bearing or altitude of a celestial body is taken, the exact time of the observation is important to any subsequent calculations done to find azimuth for compass error. This slide shows the stars and planets page of the nautical almanac. The dates are outlined in red, at the top. The whole hours of the dates are outlined in red, on the left. When a bearing or altitude of a celestial body is taken, the exact time of the observation is important to any subsequent calculations done to find azimuth for compass error. This slide shows a page from the increment table at the back of the nautical almanac. The increment covers two minutes on a page and shows the increments for every second, for the sun, planets, Aries and the moon. This slide shows the increments page for 26 and 27 minutes. The celestial bodies are highlighted in red, at the top. The seconds are highlighted in red, on the left. The nautical almanac tells us the Greenwich hour angle of the celestial bodies. GH is the angle between the prime meridian and the meridian of the geographical position of the celestial body. Here we see on the left, the section of the nautical almanac showing GH and declination of the sun for every hour, GMT, of three days. We have to interpolate between the hours to find the increments for minutes. The nautical almanac also contains a table at the back to help with finding the increments for minutes and seconds. In this slide we have highlighted the increments column for the sun and planets. The nautical almanac tells us the declination. That is the angle from the celestial equator to the celestial body on the celestial sphere. The angle is given relative to its position north or south of the celestial equator. Here we see on the left. The section of the nautical almanac showing GH and declination of the moon for every hour, GMT, of three days. We have to interpolate between the hours to find the increments for minutes. The nautical almanac also contains a table at the back to help with finding the increments for minutes. In this slide we have highlighted the increments column for the sun and planets. The navigational planets are occasionally available, and useful for observing bearings and calculating the azimuths, for comparison. To calculate azimuth, we need the geographical position on the body, the GH and the declination. The GH and declination of the planets are highlighted in red, in the center of the stars and planets page of the almanac. The navigational planets are occasionally available, and useful, for observing bearings and calculating the azimuths, for comparison. To calculate azimuth, we need the geographical position on the body, the GH and the declination. The GH and declination of the planets are highlighted in red, in the center of the stars and planets page of the almanac. Aries, or the first point of Aries, is the location of the vernal equinox, used as a reference point in celestial coordinate systems. In celestial navigation diagrams, Aries is often indicated with the horoscope symbol. In its role as a reference point, no declination information is given for Aries. This slide shows the GH column for Aries. In this slide we have highlighted the increments column for the Sun and planets. Sidereal hour angle of the star is the angle between the star and the first point of Aries, measured westward, from Aries. We will see that we have to first find the location, or GH, of Aries, then apply the SH of the star to that, to find the GH of the star. This slide highlights the part of the nautical almanac with the SH and declinations of stars. Taking bearings of the sun at sunrise and sunset, then comparing it with the calculated amplitude of the sun at the time of the bearing, 
is an easy way to fulfill the requirement to do a compass error at least once per watch. Moonrise and set will affect tides and tidal currents. Remember that astronomical or celestial refraction causes astronomical objects to appear higher above the horizon than they actually are. An amplitude is taken when the sun is half diameter above the horizon. One person's half diameter may differ from another person's estimate, for a variety of reasons. The nautical almanac provides the same sunrise time, for different latitudes, for the three days. The sunrise column is highlighted in red, on the left panel. The nautical almanac provides the different moonrise times, for different latitudes, for each of four days. The moonrise column is highlighted in red, on the right panel. Sun bearings at sunset can similarly be compared with calculated amplitude, and used to find compass error. The nautical almanac provides the same sunset time, for different latitudes, for the three days. The sunset column is highlighted in red, on the left panel. The nautical almanac provides the different moons at times, for different latitudes, for each of four days. The moons at column is highlighted in red, on the right panel. The nautical almanac provide times for twilight for every day. Twilight is important to navigators because we can see the brighter stars and the horizon at the same time and get a position fix. The altitude of the sun, when it is over the observer's meridian, gives the navigator his latitude. The nautical almanac provide times for a meridian passage for every day.